Here is the summary of the story. We are not afraid to die if we can all be together by Gordon Cook and Alan East. Gordon Cook, his wife Mary and their children Jonathan and Suzanne set sail in their boat Wave Walker from Plymouth in July 1976. They planned to emulate Captain James Cook's voyage of 1776. The initial part of the journey to Cape Town in South Africa was easy. There, the Cooks hired two men to help them navigate to Australia. Soon, the ship started to encounter rough seas. These lasted for many weeks, but the ship survived. But by 2nd January, the conditions took a turn for the worse. The waves were enormous. The ship was moving too fast despite using only a small sail. They tied down everything securely, wore their safety gear and waited for things to calm down. However, the ship was hit by a towering wave that threw Gordon overboard into the sea. He nearly drowned but was saved by his lifeline. The ship too nearly capsized but a wave cast her upright and Gordon pulled himself back on board. He was flung around and injured himself as he made his way to the wheel. Suddenly, Mary showed up and informed Gordon that the ship was sinking. Gordon left Mary at the wheel of the ship and went inside to see broken beams and scattered positions. The two crewmen were already pumping water out of the ship. Gordon went to check on his children. They claimed to be all right, though Sue's head hurt. So Gordon clambered onto the deck and managed to cover the whole suite canvas. Everyone worked through the night, pumping out the water, steering the ship as well as making emergency calls. By this time, Sue's head was badly swollen. Her arm was injured as well. When asked why she did not complain about her injuries, the plucky child said that she did not want to alarm her father. By the morning of January 3rd, the pumps had brought the water level under control. However, Gordon discovered that the ship was very badly damaged. Wave Walker would not survive the journey to Australia. So, Gordon decided to sail towards the nearest island, Il Amsterdam, a hundred kilometers east of their location. They put up the storm sail and continued east. The family and the crew ate their first meal that day after almost two days. Unfortunately, storm clouds gathered again and the weather remained harsh for the next few days. Gordon went in to comfort his children one day. He tried to convince John that everything was fine. But John valiantly declared that Sue and he weren't afraid of dying if they were all together. Gordon was moved by his son's bravery and was determined to survive. That evening, however, Gordon and Mary were sure that the ship could sink as water kept leaking into the ship. Miraculously, the ship survived the storm. Gordon tried to calculate their location using just an uncalibrated compass. He was unable to make an accurate estimate, but his daughter Sue raised his spirits. She had made him a funny car thanking him and hoping for the best. Gordon, determined to reach the island, set a course towards where he guessed the islands were. He wasn't feeling very hopeful though as he dozed off in his bunker. As he woke up a few hours later, he was greeted excitedly by his children. They informed him that they had reached Il Amsterdam. In the morning, as they went ashore, Gordon reflected on the fortitude of the two crewmen, on his wife Mary who had uncomplainingly navigated the ship for many hours. Most of all, he thought of Sue who had bravely endured a serious head injury and of John who had not been afraid to die.